Hello and welcome to Me, The Wife and Wrexham AFC. A weekly podcast and YouTube channel where we discuss all things Wrexham AFC from the point of view of long-term fans and new fans. So sit back, put your feet up, relax and let's get stuck in. Hello and welcome to episode 91 of Me, The Wife and Wrexham AFC. Another happy week, another happy Ryan. Three points. It's all good. It is all good. It, oh, it's all good. We're a little bit thrown off this week, though. We've got a week off work ahead of us. Yep. Um, Sham keeps saying the game was on Saturday. When it wasn't, it was on Friday. Sham woke up on Sunday and didn't know what day it was. <laughs> Uh, we were watching um, sort of some Premier League football on Saturday night, yep. and um, at one minute it was quarter to one, and then we sort of, in the blink of an eye, it was ten past two, and then we realised that the clocks had gone forward in the UK, so that sort of threw us off completely. Yeah, because usually it's advertised, isn't it, that the clocks are going forward? Is but... it? You said this. I've, yeah. I've got no idea. Somewhere it's all, yeah. But somewhere. Somewhere, <laughs> but obviously we missed yeah, it. We, so. Yeah, we did completely, and it was just sort of like, so we're all over the place at the moment. Um, now... Obviously, we're going to talk a little bit about um, sort of the, the the games that we've got coming up this week. Yep. Just to throw it off even more, we're the we're, us and Doncaster are the only team playing on Tuesday, so everyone else is playing on Monday. So by the time the podcast comes out, them games will be over, so we can't dwell too much on them ones. And blah blah blah. It's just it's a weird little period of time. Easter is so happy Easter to everyone who celebrates it. Happy chocolate egg day for anyone who doesn't. <laughs> yes, I think I think that's that that, that covers well, everyone. I think that covers everyone. Yeah. Yes. Well, or hopefully, if you're lactose intolerant and you don't like chocolate, hello. <laughs> I, we'll just Hiya. go hi hi hi. So let's talk about the Mansfield game. So um, obviously on Friday. Got it right. Yeah. So usually on a match day, we um, at half past one we go to the race course, um, and we have our chips and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Got to have my chips on there. On I, do you know what I love? Right. But... I can see in your eyes. Yeah. When you when you've lost your train of thought, and I, I yeah. can just see it. I can see your train of thought. Never help me out, though, dear. No, I can just see it <laughs> drifting out of the front of your head. And into the ether, and it's... I could see that look you gave me in the eye, and it was almost like help, panic. Help. I, I, I don't know what I'm saying, so I'm just gonna go chips. chips. Yes. So anyway, but on Friday we met up. We, we had uh, there was some listeners over from America, yes. from Montana, um, and they. I should have done that the other way, Montana, America. But anyway, yeah. um, so we met up with them in the turf before the game. So we met up with Chaz, Courtney, Michaela, Whitney, Coulter. Um, who were just... But, uh, I'm just going to say it. Yeah. Fair play for remembering them names because I, I'm rubbish at names. If this was just me doing this podcast... You would have just said Chaz and his I would, people. I, yeah, Chaz and his crew. It Chaz would, and his would crew. Have because I, my, my grasp on names is awful. So kudos to I've you. I've got your back. Me. Yes. Um, so, yeah, so we met with them and they were just... Um, Michaela and Courtney had um, their dragon onesies on. Yes. Which, by the way, Michaela so kindly said that I could have hers because she didn't have room in her suitcase, which we've got to go and pick up, by the way. Yes. Um, yes. So, yeah, we've got to do that. Um, so, yeah, they were, it was just such a lovely... The sun was shining. It was. And, I, I look, we've met up with lots of international fans who listen to the show, you know, over the... Over the sort of months, and uh, you know years. that we've been years that we've been doing this, we have met up with quite a few listeners. Um, I'm just going to throw it out there: it's not something that everyone needs to follow uh, in the future. But uh, Chaz brought gifts; he brought us gifts, and I'm not saying everyone has to bring us gifts. But I'm going to say this: it put him right up there. Right up there at the top of the list for bringing gifts, he brought us some. So Man Montana's known for wild huckleberries, apparently. Apparently. Never knew that. Do know, know that now. He brought us some wild huckleberry tea. Which I'm yet to try, but you tried it, haven't you? Tried it. Lovely. Yeah, I'll have to try um, it. Wild huckleberry chocolate. I, it's dark chocolate. It's, do you know what? 
It's so good, though. It is the nicest chocolate I've tasted in a it long time. It is really good. Um, fridge magnet. Which Alfie was very happy about, so thank you for that. He it, loves a magnet. He does. He like, uh, we got a, he, he brought us a $2 bill, which I, I didn't even know existed till recently. Look, it was so nice. He d didn't have to do that. No, it was very lovely. But did. And has definitely put him up in our estimations. <laughs> yeah, so thank you very much. But it was it was just so lovely to meet you. It um, was. So you they... feel, it's weird. Sorry to interrupt, but it's weird because obviously we you know we meet these people for the first time, but we chat with them so much on social media, and you feel like you know when I meet new people, I'm a bit I'm a bit awkward. I, I you know I'm not. Uh, I'm not a horrible person, but I just I'm I'm very kind of shy. Yeah. And I and it takes but Ryan will talk to anyone. He's like his dad. His dad will talk to anybody. Yeah. Um, which is a nice trait to have, I think. But um but you with, think. <laughs> no, it is. But with with Chaz and all the other people that we've met the who listen to the podcast, I just feel like we know them like really, yeah. really well. Yeah, and it's, yeah. it's that you know, they've become friends and yeah. it's just, I, just, I just love that we would never have met these people had we not started no doing this. so that's yeah. what i love about this podcast it brings us all together it does it, 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 look it lets us meet people that we pr probably never would have met which is really nice and i really enjoy that i mean t they have gone so as a group they've uh, they, they're heading over to liverpool for a couple of days just to see liverpool because obviously it's quite You've close got to go and see liverpool not, yeah. the get, not the team, yeah. obviously. Uh, and then Chaz is coming back to Wrexham on Tuesday to get the supporters bus and he's coming to the Doncaster game. So, um, yeah, we, we'll be uh, from the Doncaster game. I know I'm jumping ahead a little bit. We'll be doing a half time and a full time. We'll try and get Chaz involved in one of them too so that he can, you know, you can all meet him. We're going to, we're going to, um, hopefully get him to sit by us yeah because yeah. he'll be on his own yeah. and we, yeah we're just gonna so... i'm sure he's the kind of guy who makes friends anywhere he goes so i'm sure he'll have plenty of mates by the time he gets off that supporters bus yeah. anyway won't need us no won't need us we'll be, uh... anyway <laughs> any... oh we met other people we did we met Stuart. yes um and his um daughter um, I think it was his son, but it might have been uh, Hope's boyfriend. I'm not 100% sure, so sorry about that. But um, <laughs> There's quite a difference, that, isn't it? Is it is quite a difference. Boyfriend or brother. Well, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I'm really <laughs> sorry. Um, so, but we met Stuart and his family. And Stuart happens to be the father of Ollie, who um, is the uh, analyst for the academy team. Yeah, it was he, 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 another really nice guy. So down to really earth. nice. He's Lovely. so uh, Stuart's a a, um, a season ticket holder at Watford and yep. has been for years and years and years. Obviously, his son is now working at Wrexham. That's why he spent a bit of time up here. Um, and um, yeah, chatting to him. Uh, uh, for anyone who doesn't know the history of Watford, it's quite similar to Wrexham if you go back enough. Mm. So everyone knows who Elton John is. Elton John bought Watford back in the 80s and it was a similar sort of thing. He took Watford from quite low down in the leagues, spent a lot of money there, took them through the leagues. Everyone hated Watford because they had like a superstar, pop star owner and the similarities are quite they're quite close with yeah. what's happened at Wrexham now. So we had a really good chat with Stuart and it was really nice to talk to him. Um, but yeah, it's... Um, and then obviously we had a, a little interview on the Welcome to Wrexham. Yeah, with which the Welcome was to Rex completely like not planned Out at of all. the blue. No, not planned. Um, yeah, Sandy brought up the... Uh... The, the clean position thing <laughs> that I said, which I'm never going to live down. Um, but no. I stand by it. I like the clean in any position. <laughs> <laughs> it's what it is, isn't it? It is what it is. You yeah. just, you just got to roll with that. Got to roll with it. Look, so all, all in all, um, a, a very good day. We also fleetingly met, Ke is it Cairo? Cairo? Cairo uh, R.I. Yes, we met him, which was lovely. Sorry we didn't get to chat with you, but I yes. really needed food. <laughs> um, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, look, it's, oh, we meet so many lovely people. I had, a, I had a little chat with Andy when you'd gone to your seat. Andy Jasper had a chat with him about the I game. Like I haven't well. seen Andy for ages. It's because you rush off to your seat and I stay down. No, and my I, back was hurting and I like to watch the lads warm up. Yeah, so. you do, so you keep saying, yeah. <laughs> Just to get like a, 
a grasp of the what the game's going to be like. Anyway, we're just waffling on now. We are. Let's talk about the game in Let's hand. Let's talk about the Mansfield game. So, uh, one change uh, to the starting lineup. Sort of a enforced change in a way. So, Jacob yeah. went, went off in the last game injured. Um, so, McLean came back uh, into the, the starting 11. Uh, not in the middle. As no. we sort of talked about, uh, he, he went on to the left because mm. Jacob wasn't there. Um, any position. Any position. Uh, <laughs> we, he could have gone into the middle because maybe we could have put Callum on the left. Um, but he decided to go with um, uh, with McLean yeah. on the left. And it was just a straight switch for Mendy, basically. Everyone else in that starting eleven exactly the same as the, the, the previous game. Um, not sure that's a huge shock really, because they played so well in the previous game. Um, I, the, the one change we made had to be made. Apart from that, it was an unchanged lineup. So yeah. and I, I think that, was, um, that, that, that wasn't a huge shock. Uh, George Evans was back on the bench. Mm. Um, Gorgeous George. As we sort of guessed last week on the podcast, we didn't think he was going to start. You know, coming back from an injury, it was sort of like... You're not just going to throw him straight back in, are you? Um, you're going to get him on the bench, get him a few minutes later on in the game, which is pretty much what happened. And that's what we expected to happen, isn't it, really? Um, so uh, Barney was on the bench as well. He was, which was a bit confusing. It was a bit of a shock for us because yeah. earlier in the week we'd seen, we'd seen Ryan with a uh, boot on. Like a, a, a not a le bouton, no, just a boot. What do you call what do you is it? What is it? It's like know. a surgical. Your mum's got one at the moment, she has, yeah. <laughs> uh, is it like a surgical sort of I think boot. it's to stop it from like moving and help, yeah, whatever. stop yeah. your stop your ankle from turning and it keeps it in one position. I we I call it a boot, is that what you call I it? Think people, yeah, yeah, I there probably is a medical term for it, but. Med it's a boot. A medical boot. A medical so boot. He, he had one of them on earlier in the week. So we weren't really expecting to see Barney at all. No. Um, obviously, uh, Bolton played in the in the uh, the Grimsby game, played very well. I sort of felt like he was going to continue and he was going to be sort of it, it, in that position for this game anyway. Yeah. Um, that was sort of even more evident when Barney went off injured and I thought, well, he's not going to be in the squad, but he was, which is another huge positive for me because I don't like being restricted in any position to we have to pick this person because this is the only person that's fit in that position. I like options. Look, it's not my options. I like Phil having options is what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Phil can have the headache. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, so I was um, I, I was surprised. It was an unchanged back three. I don't think you can. We keep talking about this. I'm not sure you can change the back three anymore. Well, it, no. It's, Them three together are just... It was an unchanged back three for the sixth game yes. in a row. Um, which we have been crying out for a bit of consistency. Yes. And out of the blue... We got consistency. We've just got consistency. Do you think this is the team now for the rest of the season? Well, I was, I, I don't know. I got George coming back. I, just, it, it's just happened so, like the consistency at the back. If someone would have said to me, "Your back three is going to be Max, Owen O'Connell, and Will Boyle," I'd have said, "You're mental." I I can't believe that that is the back three. And that is the settled, consistent... It works. ...working back three. I, I mean, if someone would have said that to me two months ago, I would have thought they were crazy. But it is just working. Well, somebody put a comment on Twitter, I think. Um, I think it was Twitter or X, whatever. They said that... Um, they'd shared a post which they had actually put um, a while ago when Will Boyle was a bit, you know, getting... Iffy. A bit iffy, yeah. yeah. Um, he said that he should never wear a uh, Wrexham shirt again, blah, 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 blah. And he actually shared his own post yeah. and said, I don't usually disagree with myself. Yeah. But this is obviously verbatim because I can't remember exactly yeah. what he said. But basically he said that... 
he retracts everything that he said. He said, Will Boyle is immense in the back three. Yeah. And I... he is. And he is, he's just... Will Boyle is always there when the, the high balls come in. Yeah. He's always there and he gets them with his head. Big lad. He's a big lad and he's just consistent. It, yeah. All three of them. And let's talk about Max Cleworth for a minute. I mean, he's just a superstar. We need, th- we need, or Phil, Ryan, Rob, Sean, Me. Humphrey, no, oh. um, the the rich Ryan. <laughs> um, they need to get Max Cleworth in a, a, a bigger contract. Ten years. Ten year contract. Because I guarantee you, people are going to, other clubs are going to be watching Max Cleworth and they are going to be going, we want him. Uh, he's young, he's 21, yeah. he's he's just, he gets better and better every single game. I love Max Cleworth and I want to adopt him. I, I, I'm old enough to adopt him. You you are. I'm old enough to be his mum. I don't think he needs adopting at 21. No. But 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 I, I get, you get what, what you, yeah. I get your point. I do. Um, you do. <laughs> I just think he's absolutely he's immense. He, 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 you know... He's still, to think he's only 21 and he's still learning, I, I, the, the performances he's putting in are just incredible. He definitely deserves Absolutely his place. Absolutely incredible. He definitely. does. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, Owen stepped in the middle of that three and has taken his chance completely. I can't, at this moment in time, I can't imagine anybody else playing in the, in the middle. I, I I sometimes forget even be, that Ben Toes is at the club anymore because I can't imagine him playing. Apart from Som- the long throws, sometimes yeah. the long throws, yeah, we do yeah. need the long throws. Yeah, I do. I, I we do miss them a little bit. But Owen for me is is a complete footballer, mm. and I think he, he he perfect perfect. Max has got everything. He can come forward. He can bring the ball forward. He plays some pinpoint passes. We'll talk. I'll talk about a bit more about that in a bit. But um, and then you've got Will on the left, who is a very different defender. Will is a very much an <clears throat> old school defender. Yeah. It's just no nonsense. He'll get his head on stuff. He'll get stuck in, and he's he, he's doing that very well at the moment. Um, in the modern game, sometimes you, a lot of clubs want ball playing defenders. Mm. I am not saying that Will Boyle can't take it down, pick a pass. He can. Uh, not When he's not under pressure, he can take that ball down, he can look around him, he can pick a pass. I think the only time it slightly falls down for Will, when he reverts back to old-school defender, is when he's under a little bit of pressure. Mm. It, it, his first instinct is, get rid of it. I don't have an issue with that. I really don't. If, he's, if, there's, if there's pressure on you and you've just got to get rid of it, do that as long as it's yeah. for someone to I, get I rid think, of it. Too. I think you know the on the flip side of that, on the other side of the three, you've got Max, who is a little bit more comfortable with the ball at his feet and doesn't mind bringing it forward and dribbling it forward and and picking passes. And, uh, do, please, no one think that I'm sort of you know putting Will down in any way, shape, or form. I just think they're very different players, and I think that that blend and mix of player is is quite nice to have at the same time. Have you noticed with Max, though, um, lately, um, like, obviously, when he, when um, you know, the first, probably probably the first season that he really, really started to play, um, so obviously the National League, he was, you know, when you've got these big guys coming at you, yeah. um, they always try to put lots of pressure on Max. And, some, you know, sometimes he would kind of, buckle under that pressure but I've noticed recently um well f- since the beginning of the season since he started playing consistently he is like he gives as good as he gets now he's not he's not afraid to you know go in for the ball when there's kind of bigger lads coming towards him yeah. I just think he's I just think he's so good and I uh, I wish I could give him. I just. I, I thought I just, you were going to cry for a minute, then. I am. I'm so proud of him. Um, <laughs> I just think he's. A lot of the games he gets, he should be man of them. I know because obviously he doesn't score goals, does yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. And it's you know if somebody scores goals, they're going to get man of the match. Yeah. Um, but I just think 
Max Cleworth is just, he's my man of the match probably most of the I, time. I think the best compliment you can give Max, I think for a defender to get man of the match, I always think is quite difficult. Yeah. Uh, because I think it's always a case of if you go and win 3 0 and somebody scores two, eh, generally you're going you're to give them the man of the match. Um, yeah. You know, or if you win 3 0 and all three uh, goals were assisted by the same player, you might give it to the one who's assisted. You, it's quite rare. I know. You have to be under the cosh uh, as a team, you know, where they're. they're pepper in your goal and then you know they're constantly at you and you just do everything right and you might sneak a 1-0 win I think maybe then defenders sort of get man of the match but it tends to be just have a look around at Premier League games it tends to be the more attack minded players yeah. that get man of the match I think the biggest compliment you can give Max is that every game at the moment he is in the man of the match conversation he is in that three players that you sort of go, it's either him, it's either him, or it's Max. And I think he's always in that conversation yeah, at the definitely. moment. And I think that's, I wouldn't, you know, as a player, I wouldn't get too disheartened being a defender that isn't winning man of the match because I think defenders tend to only win man, win man of the match in a certain set of circumstances. I just think it's a lot easier for an attacking player to win man of the match. So I think that's why he's not. But Sad like I say, but I, think, I think the biggest compliment you can give him is that he's always in the conversation. Yeah. I think. We love you, Max. Um, the game itself. Um, so McLean got booked quite early on. Uh, when I say quite early Would it on, be a game of uh, with Wrexham if McLean didn't get booked? So we just come back from a ban uh, <laughs> for getting so many yellow cards. Uh, in the first three minutes, um, he gets a yellow card. So it was it's a strange one because it was on the opposite side of the field yeah. from where we sit. So um, we didn't exactly see it very clearly did we so we're not we're not 100 percent sure what happened um it's it sort of it was against the lad who just come back from like a year out injured and the lad had to go off injured initially my my gut reaction was it was very 50 50. yes um from hearing a few people on that side of the ground uh, hearing Nigel Clough's interview after it sort of everyone seems to think it was a little bit late a touch late but I, I I don't I'm not hundred percent sure um and a few people said it could have been a red and I, luckily I, it wasn't look, I don't know because I can't really it wasn't really on the highlights and and, and stuff like that that I've seen so I, I don't know I, if I'm completely honest I, I I don't so um we'll just say it's a yellow and we'll move on with our life yeah. from that point I think yeah yes happy with that yeah um, yep. yeah yeah um happy. So um, the first thing that really happened is I think um, maybe Stephen Fletcher's rubbing off a little bit on uh, a few of the players around him. Um, Elliot Lee uh, tried a very speculative bicycle kick quite I early on. I would have loved on. if that had gone in. That would have been So immense. would I, but it was very Stephen Fletcher-esque, wasn't it? And it just sort of went straight to the keeper. It was on target, Yeah, but it went to the keeper. Yes. Yes. Which... Yeah. Uh, look, you know. Again, shots on target, shots on target. Just keep keep doing what keep you're doing there. Target. You know, it's but I just sort of felt that maybe as an older player as well, everyone's sort of looking up to Stephen Fletcher going, I'm gonna do a bicycle, okay? Andy Cannon definitely does. Yeah, he does. He yeah. does. He look he, yeah. I just love the camaraderie between like the likes of Cannon and McLean and Fletcher. I just think yeah, I just love it. I, I, I apart from that, I think I think if we're not looking at it through Wrexham eyes. I think you probably say Mansfield had the better of the first half hour. Um, they, they, without really creating too much, really, but they had a lot of the ball. Um, I, I think I said to you during the game is you can see when a team comes to the race course and they're good. Yes. Obviously, which Mansfield are. Yeah. You could... <laughs> It, you can just tell yeah. that they, they, there's, there's, you know, they're passing slicker. I, I, you know, no, no disrespect to some of the other teams that have come uh, to the race course, and some of them who've beat us. But I, I, you know, they, they, 
Mansfield were just different. You know, their, their, their passing was a lot slicker. Yeah. It was quicker. Their movement was better. And <clears throat> it, it sort of felt like it was going to be, if we were going to win this game, it was going to be well earned, mm. I, I think. But as, as we sort of talked about before the game, I wasn't really nervous about this one. See, I was. No, because we always turn up in the big game. Yeah, you have said that quite a lot. 90% of the time. Yeah. Sometimes we don't at all. You know, think of FA Trophy final. Think of Stockport away. You know, there are games where we don't turn up. I, yeah, I will hold my hands up and admit that. But nine times out of ten, we do turn up for the big games. You know, this was first against third, you know, and it was a, a, a crucial time of the season. It, it, we, I knew we were going to turn up and I knew we were going to play. So them having more of the ball and them being as slick as they were still didn't worry me in that mm. first half because I knew we would get chances and we did. You know, Mullin scored sort of, you know, half an hour in. I think it, Mullins' finish was very instinctive and, and I'm not going to say easy, but um, it, it was one of the easier ones he scored. He's definitely I, got his mojo back, hasn't he? He, he has. And um, I think the, the thing for me, there was two things in that move which were far more important than Mullin putting it in. And I think the first one was Max Cleaver's pass just split the defence completely. And I mean, it was just, it was like... Effortless. Yeah, it was one of them passes that you would, that wouldn't look out of place in a, a very big game. You know, like a, a sort of Champions League, Premier League game. I know that sounds stupid, but it, it, it's not. That one pass was world-class pass. But the other thing that was really world-class was Andy Cannon's run to get on the end of that pass. I mean, the, them two things together were, were perfect. And that is what created that goal. Was it the best cross from Andy? Not really. The defender probably should have cleared it. Yeah. You know, he, he got to it first, swung a leg at it and missed. So it wasn't the best cross in the world. But what came before that was superb. And that's what created that chance. And we deserved that little bit of luck with that defender swinging and missing at it yeah um, we deserved that from because of what came before it for me and i just thought it was everything about it was wow yeah beautiful chef's kiss it was it was <laughs> it, it really was um a few minutes after that oh this is funny. i was convinced absolutely convinced that um aaron lewis had equalized so the ball came out to him on the edge of the box <clears throat> I think it was from a corner I can't quite remember but came out to him on the edge of the box and he hit it Arthur didn't move because I, th I don't think he could see it but from where we were sitting yeah it as it was sort of curled and I just went oh it's in and then when it didn't go in it felt like a bit of a, a glitch in the matrix because from where we were sitting it was in all day long it was in and curling towards goal as well I, I was just convinced it was in and then when it didn't go in it was sort of like what just happened then what happened then that was in wasn't it uh, and it was like yeah. and it was it, yeah it was a, it was an odd moment because it was just the angle we were at it was in all day long so it was it was strange um but this was in the second half wasn't it no it was the first half it was in the first half, so we were right behind it. We could see it, and it was, just, it was, yeah, it was just, it was, it was odd for me. Um, and it, but it was, it, it, I was very happy it didn't go in. Obviously, from it was such a weird feeling of being be right behind the ball, going they've equalised, and then going oh, oh no, no they, they haven't. haven't. <laughs> and it was just, it was, it was just really good, and I, I really enjoyed that moment. That, yeah, it was, yeah, it was really nice, but. Um, yeah, that, then it was half time. Um, we did our live, obviously, from from the ground. So Ryan, for, Ryan walked off and left me. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I do that now and again. Um, <laughs> look, if anyone doesn't know, we do uh, live broadcasts at half time in games and at full time in games. Um, so the half time ones are obviously from the ground themselves. 
um, and the full-time ones at, as we are walking away from the ground. Uh, we will be doing one on Tuesday, so tomorrow for the signal Doncaster. Signal allowed. S yeah, signal permitting. We will yeah. be doing one uh, on Tuesday from the Doncaster game because we're going to that one. Um, but yeah, we have loads of fun doing them. So you please uh, um, tune, tune in. Tune in. <laughs> tune in. It makes it sound like a some like old uh, 60s radio station. But yeah, tune in. Tune in. Neither way from Wrexham AFC. One nil up at half time. I think happy, it was happy, happy. Yeah, I think on on the balance of play was that fair? Uh, I don't know really because I don't <clears> think <throat> I think Mansfield definitely had more of the ball. And well, they, out of the they whole game, they had the most possession of the ball. Yeah, they did first half and second yeah. half. You know, and but they didn't. I didn't feel like they created that much with it. Um, I, not because they didn't have the ability to do that, but I just thought we played them very well. You know, we limited them to very little. I I sort of felt, mm. um, and so I think we were we were definitely we we sort of we played the game, and I think yeah. we, we played what was in front of us, and I think we did it really well, and I think we go back to our back three again of just solid, resolute. Nothing's coming past. Composed. Yeah, uh, yeah. All of the all of all the good of them, words. Yeah. All of the good words. All of the good big words. Yeah, all of the good big <laughs> words. I think we, you know, we definitely did that. Yes. Um, Mansfield started the quicker really in the second half. Um, and what was his name? James Gale had a shot which Arthur saved really well down to his right. Um, and that was sort of like uh, nice and early on in the first half. Um, and then we'll skip ahead a little bit to the sixty first first minute. 65th. 5th. 65th um, <laughs> minute. Um, and we'll talk about a little bit about the Mansfield disallowed goal. Now, OK. This is the one that I thought was funny. Oh, th there's a funny moment in this. Absolutely. Because the, so Davis Keelor Don nipped in, uh, took the ball out of Arthur's hands. We'll come back to that in a second. Uh, scored. Uh, the ref had already blown before he put it in, but he, he put the ball in. Obviously, the Mansfield fans celebrated. The best part of my whole day was their goalkeeper <laughs> turning to our fans behind the him. The tech end. Yeah, and sort of taunting them that they'd scored and then running off towards his own fans, celebrating. It was brilliant for anyone to turn and taunt our fans so and to then have that goal taken away from you and you look really stupid... That to me was that was just the epitome. and having to play oh, there for the rest of the game. Yeah, it was just my <laughs> favourite part of the whole game. I, if you're going to do that, make sure just pause a little, uh, just pause a minute, and make sure that it's been allowed. And then, if you want to go, look, I've got no issue at all in the other fans when you score, no issue at all, right? But. You've got to make sure that it's been allowed first. So funny because the the guys that were sitting by us, um, they were like gesturing towards the goalkeeper. I'm not going to say what they were gesturing, yeah. um, but it was just funny because everyone was going like just oh, it was just hilarious. And I was like, oh my god, that is probably the best moment of the season. It was my favourite moment of the day. I'll be <laughs> honest. Forget the forget everything else that happened. It was my favourite moment of the day, and he just had to hang his head a oh. little bit, stood on the edge of the box for a little bit, so he didn't have to walk back. To towards the fans. Oh, it was brilliant. I loved it. It was good. The incident itself. Let's talk about that for a minute. So, seen the replays? Uh-huh. Arthur definitely gets his hands on the he ball. He did. He gets both hands on the ball. Um, Davis Kilo Dunn nips it out of his hands and scores. Now, I think where they feel, you know, that on paper, it's a free kick. You can't kick it out the keeper's hands. There's two factors in this. One, he, Arthur didn't really grab Lesser. it, did he? he? He literally, if you look at that replay again, he had it in fingertips. Still had it in his hands. Though. Still had it in his hands, which I've got no issue with. But I can sort of see why he was a little bit aggrieved in the sense of he was barely touching it. Uh. And sometimes with Arthur, I love Arthur. Right, Arthur's so laid back, and he's got that laid back sort of like persona about him, hasn't he? Just like he's just he could have a deck chair sometimes and just be lying lying there. He's so laid back. Do you want and, that from a goalkeeper? No, though? I, I do in a way because I want a goalkeeper that's calm, 
and laid back and, and can assess what's in front of him. Yeah. Sometimes, though, I just want maybe that laid backness to be put to one side and I just want him to go, mine. This is mine. I'm grabbing that. You're not having it. You're not having it. Yeah. Um, on another day, that may not have been disallowed. It, it, you, you're putting the situation in the hands of a referee who has to assess that in a split second. Um, and if that ref didn't feel he quite had it, all of a sudden it's one all, mm. and it changes the whole dynamic of the, of the game. So sometimes you just want to. Go, Grab the ball, mm. grab it, you know, just and um, the other thing which I'm not 100% sure about is he gets it. And because he's only got it in fingertips, the, the angle's not quite there. I sort of felt like after he got it in fingertips, he, dropped it. he was dropping it. I, I'm not sure. I've generally, I've watched it a couple of times, but the angle's a bit obscured and it sort of felt like, He's got it in fingertips and everyone stops watching at that point because they go, he's got two hands on it. Yeah. I sort of felt like he was dropping it after that. And I wasn't 100% sure. Look, I think he kicked it out of his hand, if I'm honest. I, don't I think, think he... he probably did. Yeah. But I, it, was ju it was close. It was close. And um, it could have been one all. It wasn't. Everyone's happy. And we move on. And three minutes later... We get a penalty. <laughs> now. Questionable. <laughs> it's not questionable, mm. I don't think. I don't think that's the word. I think the word is wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because when the incident happened, <laughs> Bolton terrorised them, I felt. I think this is somebody else who needs a mention from, from Friday because Bolton terrorised them. His speed... Is ridiculous. He's it's like so a, he's quick. He's like a bolt of light, isn't he? He is. And the he, he took the lad on. The lad just cleaned him out completely. I was up at my seat and I was screaming for a yellow card. I wasn't appealing for a penalty. I was screaming for a yellow card. And then when he gave the penalty, I was like, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> and it again, it's on the opposite side to where we sit. So for us, it's quite hard to tell exactly what's going on over there because we can't see the lines, can we? But we get a good idea of where the, yeah. the edge of the box is. For me, it felt, I thought, oh, that's close. It doesn't feel like it was in the box to me. No. Um, and then we've since seen the replay. definitely wasn't in the box. It definitely <laughs> wasn't in the box. Um, Nigel Clough did an interview after. He, he wasn't happy about it. As any manager who had that given against them, you know, would be unhappy. I would be unhappy if that came against us. But we weren't going to say anything. <laughs> Just get on with it. Just get on with it. We'll get on with that. We'll take that. Yeah. Um, and then Mullin just absolutely... The, the keeper did his own work because he didn't move. Because he knew Mullin was going to absolutely blast it. And he knew he had a better chance just standing up than diving one way or another yeah. because it, it Mullin does place it into corners time to time. Generally, he just blasts it. So the, the keeper played the percentages, thought, I'll stand up. Mullin hit it so hard that... It, I'm it, surprised it didn't go through the net. It, it, <laughs> it only went about a foot away from the keeper and he just couldn't react quick enough yeah. because it was, it, it was just an absolute thunderbolt. And no one was stopping that. And I think at 2 0, I, I was going to say I felt a bit more relaxed. I, I wasn't tense at all during the game. So I, it, it, there was no sort of relaxing to be felt for me. I always feel tense until the final whistle, even if yeah. we are two, three, four goals up. Well, maybe if we're four goals up, it's kind of like a bit, oh, OK, we're all right here. But yeah, I was a bit like, you know, playing the um, first. The team that are in first, yeah, who are no longer first, no. Um, but yeah, I, it was qu quite an intense game. I felt sick all the way through the game. You had been a little bit ill, though, so yeah, maybe that but... was something to do with it. Yeah, maybe, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. I just felt I did feel nerves. Yeah, I mean, um, 
Mullins on 99 goals now. I really wished he'd got his 100th in that game, but it was yeah. It's coming, look. It's not like it's not like it's not coming, Tuesday. is it? He's one now behind Albert Kinsey, who's uh, ninth on the list. So Mullin is currently 10th in the all-time Wrexham goal scorers in like 130 odd games or something. It's r- ridiculous. Albert to to put it into context, Albert Kinsey is on 100 for Wrexham. Uh, he's ninth on the list. Um, it took him 300 games to score that amount of goals. Uh, so Paul's, a... Paul's going to do it in less than half what, what he did. Is this um, 100 goals whilst he's been at Wrexham? Or is this yes, his... Yeah, yeah. Just, no, no, no. Just 100 goals for Wrexham. Wrexham goals. Wrexham goals, that yeah. Is, that is a... It's it's no mean feat. Trust trust me. It, it really isn't. It's um, It's... I think we owe him a, a big debt for the amount of goals that he scored for us and, and big goals as well. So, yeah, uh, yeah, when we needed them. Yeah, definitely. Um, the only thing that really happened after that, we Lee nearly made it three. Keeper came out, he lobbed it over him, just a little bit wide. Stephen Fletcher was coming in, but it, it just couldn't late. really get on the yeah. end of it properly. Um, so, yeah, I, look, I was happy with 2-0. I'd gone for 3-1. I'd gone for two one. You'd gone for two one. Decent predictions, I think. I don't mind getting my prediction wrong when we win. (laughs) No, no, uh, not at all. I mean, and I'd prefer a clean sheet. Yeah, I mean, it's a clean sheet against top of the league who've scored seventy nine goals this season. I mean that before the game on Friday, it what they averaged more than two a game. And to restrict them to nothing and not really many chances either. You know, I, I think that was that, that that was key for us. Mm. It, it's a performance that you can sort of go, let's go and win the league now. You know, because that's how it felt. Yeah. It was felt like, right, they're done. Let's go and win the league. You know, but they're I, not. Yeah, I think, yeah, Mansfield was a big game and it's over now. And it's it's kind of, I know we've still got games where we need to, you know, bring it. Yeah. But I just think Mansfield was one of the games where I was like, I mean, obviously Stockport, we've still got them to play. We have, but, yeah. Um, yeah, I think Mansfield was one of those teams that was like, right, if we just smash goals past them and get the three points, then I think Look, confidence will be built. Yes. I, I, Mansfield are one of the teams that we are going to have to beat on points to be above because their goal difference is massively different to ours. Yeah. They've, I mean, they've beat teams 5-0, 6-0, 9-2. They've won in one game. Ridiculous. Day. They've scored a lot. Of, you know, they haven't scored loads more goals than us, but it's it's how many they've conceded, yeah. which which improves their goal difference massively. I think, I, I have, I can't sort of guarantee this, but they're, they're close to 20 ahead, I think even after Friday. So, you know, we're going to have to beat them on points. I sort of don't want to face Mansfield in League One, to be honest. But it's inevitable, probably. Can Ooh, you say inevitable? Inevitable. I, I'm not sure you can say inevitable, probably. No, because... I'm not sure they, they go together. They're contradicting words. But, yeah. OK, it's, it's probable that we will see okay. them in League One. Inevitable. It's inevitable, yeah. <laughs> Um, look, some of the other games from Friday. Stockport won 3 0 away at Forest Green. Uh, MK Dons beat Walsall 5 0. Uh, Barrow beat Grimsby 3 1. Barrow are coming back into it now. They really are. Um, and they, they worry me a little bit. Uh, Crew drew 0 0 away at Gillingham. Um, so we're still third in the league. We're level now on points with Mansfield, who have dropped to second. But goal difference is meant. Yeah. Meant, yeah. Stockport are top, one point ahead of us, but they have a game in hand, which is the slight kicker. Uh, we're three ahead of MK Dons in fourth, but we've got a game in hand on them. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're six clear of Barrow in fifth. But they have a game in hand on us, and we're seven clear of Crew in sixth. Okay, I think well, I'm, it's nice we're starting to build up a bit of a gap between us and Crew. But now Barrow have started coming back into it. MK Dons keep winning, so w- at the moment we just need to just let's just worry about MK Dons. Not worry, but focus on MK Dons and Barrow a uh-huh. little bit because you know uh, Barrow can go level on points with. Um, with MK Dons, 
but will have played a game less than MK Dons. So they've got a game in hand on us. So I think they're more of a threat at the moment mm. than maybe MK yeah. Dons, but who knows? Football, I, uh, no one knows. No, no. A um, little bit of news. Yes. So um, originally the Welcome to Wrexham documentary was due to air on the 18th of April, which was um, when we had two games left of the season, which was a bit weird. We always thought that was a bit odd. So, but they've since announced that it's going to now be aired on the 2nd of May, which is five days after the end of the season. As long as we're not in the playoffs. Shh. <laughs> It'll be five days after the end of the season. After the we're... last game in the regular season. Yes. <laughs> Whatever. Um, also, as well, um, the uh, Wrexham women team. Yeah. They won 2 0 again at Aberystwyth Town. Yes. On, I th but I think it was Thursday they played. Who knows? Well, look, we're, we're, we're out of the window with days. It was one days. day last week. It was one day. Um, but yeah. congratulations to them winning another game. Clean sheet again for them, three points. Yes. Happy days. Um, financials were released as well this week. This has caused a bit of controversy. It has. You. And do you know what? I'm not going to dwell on it too much. No. Because there are lots of other podcasts that out there that have already talked about it. There's a, there's a few that I've sort of stressed about it a little bit. I don't think there's any stress to be had with the financials at the moment. No. Um, now, just to, I'll run through them so everybody is aware. So the turnover um, is just under ten and a half million for the for the last financial year. That's up about four and a half million. Um, the retail uh, sales have gone up from two million to three point four. Sponsorship up a million from zero point eight to one point eight. Football revenue up zero uh, point eight million to one point three. That's mainly because of our FA Cup run. So that's yeah, football yeah. football revenue from competitions, basically. Yeah. Um, payroll. Now this is the big one. Payroll has gone up two point nine million. To six point nine million. I'm assuming that's player payroll, isn't it? Think, Not like no. I think that is payroll. Hospitality. People. I think that's payroll. For everybody. That's payroll. Yes. Um, total loss is five point one million. Now we. Now that sounds horrendous. It does sound horrendous. But that was to be expected because the, the owners had always said they would do whatever they that was necessary to get us out of the national league. And then you obviously get more incoming money mm -hmm. when you're in the EFL from like TV and all that sort of stuff. Um, the TV, a new TV deal has just been recently been signed by the EFL as well. That will increase um, teams' um, income from uh, TV from by twenty five percent from um, the, from next season as not well. Not too so shabby. Not too shabby. Um, total owed to owners is up uh, five point two million to just under nine. This million. is the thing I think that people were yes. kind of grasping on to. Yes, it is now. Um, as I say, I don't want to dwell on it too much. We were always this was always sort of going to be the case. I, I think I, it's the case for most football teams. It isn't is. It? So, like for example, uh, Notts County, I think owe their owners fifteen million. Um, owners like this are not. They're not knocking on our door for the money back. This is a long term project. Yeah. Um, we don't need to worry too much about how much we owe them um this if they ever decide to walk away which in my opinion isn't going to happen certainly in the next 10 15 years but if they were they would never leave the club in a position where they were going to be struggling or they they they, they, they would force them to pay back money or something like that what you have to bear in mind is the damage to their reputation as public figures mm -hmm. would far outweigh them losing £9 million. Pounds. It, it just would. For Joe Bloggs, who lives in Wrexham, from Wrexham, and has, has done well for himself and owns successful businesses, which we've had in the past, and have put their money into the club, and then when they leave, they, they want all of their money back. And that puts the club in huge danger. Mm -hmm. Mainly Which it because, had. yeah. Had done in the past. But 
it, people like Ryan and Rob are not going to damage their reputation by doing something like that, by potentially putting a club out of business. You, you just got to think about it logically. That That's never going to happen. They are, they are going to write that debt off before going down that road. Yeah. They, they just are. You know what I mean? So it's, look, it's nothing to worry about. Everything's going in the right direction. It's just a measly nine million. We always knew we were going to lose money yeah. in, that, in that National League season because we invested so heavily in players and all that sort of stuff. Um, people have asked about sort of FFP, sort of like financial fair play, and whether we are close to breaching that. Not really at the moment. I mean, you have to really drill down into it, but we're not in a position where we're looking at sort of breaching any sort of You've rules. You've got people like, like Sean Harvey who are you know we've said it before but he's like what he doesn't know about football and all about the ffp and all that kind of stuff it's not worth knowing so no. he will make sure that that doesn't happen look sean's made mistakes in the past and he has he's made mistakes in the past all right i'm bigging him up no, and you're just knocking him down no my point is he's made mistakes in the past but he's learned from them mistakes yeah. and th them mistakes aren't going to be repeated Thank so God. yes so, look, there's nothing to stress about. Everything's good. Uh, turnover is going to continue to increase. Uh, you know, everything, it, it, you know, we're all good at the moment. So no one needs to stress. We're not going to go into it any more than that. Um, some people who got in touch, we had David Williams, who said um, about my comment last week, I agree with the mood comment. Um, it pees me off that even at my age, my demeanour can be determined <laughs> by 11 men I don't know kicking a ball, but hey-ho. So true. So, it is so true. And look at me. Look how happy I am at the moment just because yeah. uh, a load of men have kicked a ball in the net. Uh, David Milton, I'd rather, ha I'd rather had a match for Evans in the centre move, McLean to the left and bench Mendy, Tom O'Connor to spell Evans. What we've been missing the last two games as a proper midfielder, I'm assuming this was the gr from the Grimsby game. Yes. Um, young, you know my feelings on this, but Young doesn't ever need to be, see the pitch again. This season, this hurts me to read this. Yeah. This season, except to burn minutes, Evans, Cannon, Tom O'Connor play on instinct. Young doesn't progress at uh, pro Proc process yeah. gameplay at the same level as a championship midfielder. Compare him to our current midfield, all championship level. Yeah, we've got Andy Jasper said, Shan forgot about her favourite Luke Young in the midfield when we had the conversation last week. You did. I didn't. I just didn't mention it. Well, I was talking to Andy about this and uh, we did forget about him. <laughs> we, we genuinely did. But is that an indication that he isn't really part of that conversation anymore? It, 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 you know, maybe, maybe yeah, that's maybe. why we we forgot about him. Um, I know it's a sad thought, but I think McLean will go back to the left wing. It's a shame, as I think McLean could have gone in the Lee position, who I think needs a rest. That See is... McLean, any position. <laughs> Chris Wilms, it's crazy how you can have an entire midfield conversation and Davis' name doesn't even come up. He was crucial part a couple of years ago. Now he's an afterthought. So much depth. Um, I did reply to Chris, uh, but I just thought I'd bring it up because it's quite an important point. I think the conversation we had was sort of surrounding the defensive element of the midfield, whereas I think Davis is more of a Lee replacement. I, I think of him more mm. as an attacking midfielder as opposed to dropping in that hole where you get Cannon and Evans and, you know, Tom yeah. O'Connor and Luke Young and, you know, potentially McLean. I, I don't think he's quite the same position for me. But, yeah, again, someone else that we sort of overlooked, really, mm -hmm. uh, in there. So if you do want to get in touch, thank you very much for your messages, but uh, keep them coming. Um, you can get in touch on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, TikTok, or email us at me, the wife, and rexamafc at gmail.com. Two games coming up in there. Yeah. Yeah. Doncaster. Yes. So uh, it's a League Two match. Yes. On Tuesday, the 2nd of April. Um, and it's away at the Eco Power Stadium in Doncaster. Um, it's just over two hours um, from here, from Wrexham, uh, which is about 125 miles. Yeah. We're going to the game. Um, Kickoff is at quarter to eight. It is. It's worth mentioning, like I did before, everyone else plays on Monday. Mm -hmm. But it's only our game that's on Tuesday. So when this podcast comes out, everyone else will have already played. 
which is a bit odd for us because they literally, the games will just be finishing as this podcast comes out. Um, I mean, just to, just to run through it quickly, Crew are playing Forest Green, uh, Mansfield are playing Accrington, Morecambe are playing Barrow, Notts County, MK Dons, and Stockport are playing Wimbledon. I think one of the, the key ones for us is Morecambe Barrow and Notts County, MK Dons. We could do with Morecambe and Notts County winning them games. Um, literally, when you're listening do to it. this... You don't well. Well, when you're oh. listening to this, you don't have to wait and find out what happens. The you're... game has literally just finished, so you can just check. But yeah. So yeah. the game on Tuesday against Doncaster is actually available for everyone because it's obviously a nighttime game, so yeah. there's no uh, media blackout. Um, and it's uh, our last league game against them was two one. Uh, we, we won. Sorry, two one <laughs> in September. Um, where Lee. Uh, what? It was an 88th minute winner from Elliot Lee in that game. Um, I, yeah, it was it, it was quite tight. It was tighter than I... I, I that, that confused me, sorry. Yeah, it was tighter than I thought that game was going to be. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think Tuesday is going to be tighter than we, yeah. everyone thinks it's going to be as well. Um, they won 2-1 at Crawley on... 2-0. Uh, 2-0 uh, two, two at uh, Crawley uh, on Friday. Uh, the last five, they've won four and drawn one. They're actually, they've only lost one in the last 11 league games. They've won seven out of them 11. Yeah, I know. They're on a bit of a roll. They're, they're still only 15th in the league, but they've definitely pulled away from that relegation battle. Um, Which they, they want to keep doing. Don't yeah, they? exactly. They've won 15, drawn 7 and lost 17 this season. Their top scorer is Joe Joe Ironside, uh, who's got 14. Love that name. Ironside. Ironside. Prediction? So, oh, yes. I was just about to jump onto the Colchester game. Um, my prediction, I'm going to go 2-1. Uh, 2-1. No. 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 Okay. I'm going to go 2-0. I was going to do that. Oh, where are you? It's a shame, isn't it? I'm going to go 3-1. 3-1. Two... I actually stole the mine. You know, know. here's what it is. Uh, on Saturday, we're playing Colchester as a, a, another League Two match. It's away again at the Job Surf Community Stadium. Uh, it's about four hours away, 230 miles. Uh, unfortunately, we're not going to that one. It's a bit sad, but there we go. Uh, Saturday, the 6th of April, it's a 3 p.m. kickoff. Uh, available, obviously, for international fans on iFollow. Uh, the last league game was the 2 1 home win in December. That's the one where George Evans was sent off. Um, so they beat Newport 2-1 at home on Saturday. Um, Friday. You've put Saturday. Friday, isn't it? Friday. Um, only second win in the last 10 games. Yeah. Um, their last uh, five games, they've won one, drawn three and lost one. Mm. Um, they're 22nd on 37 points, one point above the relegation zone. So they're going to be bringing it on that Saturday. Yeah. Um, Season results, they've won nine, draw 10, lost 19. Uh, their top scorer is Joe Taylor. Um, but you forget about him because he's at Lincoln now. So, yeah, we don't care about him. I'm not even going to read how many goals he's at. But their next one is Cameron McGeehan, um, who has scored seven. Yeah, prediction. Um, ooh, because of what I just said about them bringing it, Yeah. I'm going to go 2-1. I'm going to go 2-0. Okay. Because that's what I wanted for the other game. So. <laughs> okay. Um, Fair enough. Some of the other teams who they're playing on Saturday. Uh, MK Dons are away at Forest Green. Crew are away at Accrington. Barrow are at home to Swindon. Mansfield are at home to Crawley. And Stockport are away to Sutton. <clears throat> Sutton is a team I would not want to be playing at the moment because they are flying. I think they won three in a row. Sutton, so. Fingers crossed. Yeah, definitely. A uh, quick shout out for Dragon Chat. Uh, it's a mental health peer support group. Um, they run two Zoom calls uh, every week. Uh, that is on Monday at 8 p.m. for the women. And on Thursday at 7 p.m. 30. Yeah. Of the men. <laughs> uh, look, it's a great service. Uh, it's it, Look, we try and shout it out. Well, no, we don't try. We, we do, do shout it out every week. 
Uh, the best thing to do is follow Dragon Chat Dash Steve Lloyd on Twitter for all the information. If you want to jump on one of them calls, um, all of the details of how to get on there are down in the description of this video. If you're watching on YouTube, if you are watching on YouTube, please make sure you subscribe because it massively helps us out. Subscribers are going in the right direction at the moment yeah, as well, aren't they? Yes. So, quiz time, darling. Quiz time. Are you ready? Yeah. Is it about Easter eggs? No, it's not. Not oh. at all. So, number one. Okay. Just make sure you can't see there. Just there's a little mirror, and I just want to make sure Sean can see the reflection. I can't see anything. Number one. <clears throat> Don't interrupt any of these questions because you have options. Okay? okay. I like options. What was the name of the Mansfield goalkeeper on Saturday? A. Charlie Lim. B. Corey Sim. Or C. Christy Pym. A. Charlie Lim. No, it's the one you scoffed at. It is Christy Pym. That is his Christy name. Christy Pym. Christy Pym. I thought that was the name made up, to be fair. Yeah, uh, that's, yeah I thought it would be. <laughs> uh, number two. Which was higher on Saturday? Wrexham's corners, Mansfield's bookings, or Wrexham's offsides? B. Mansfield's bookings? Yeah. Correct. I hate it when you do that. <laughs> Number three. We're due to play Doncaster on Tuesday. Yeah. But who scored their only league goal of the season in the 2-1 home win in September? No options. Elliot Lee. Is uh, their only league goal of the season. So you oh. think Elliot Lee has scored one. Oh. What, from our team or theirs? Ours, you fool. I why, do you know anyone else from Doncaster? Why haven't you given me options? I don't remember. So um, it's someone who obviously doesn't score a lot, isn't it? Ben Tozer. No. Luke it, Young. It is Luke Young. I get that right. What do you mean you get that well, right? You didn't say. How I... many guesses you get? You could have gone through the old team. No, Luke Young, I got that one right. Okay, all right then. You didn't, but. <laughs> I did. We have six games remaining. We with did. 18 points up for grabs. Mm -hmm. But how many points did we get in our last six games of last season? 11, 13, or 15? 13. Incorrect, it was 11. And our last question. <laughs> our remaining opponents are Doncaster Rovers, mm. Colchester United, Crawley Town, Forest Green Rovers... Crew Alexandra and Stockport County. But which team's name has the highest value in Scrabble? Ooh. That's why I read them out in there. Crew in Alexandra. You, you've gone for that. Do you know what? When I was doing it... You thought that was it. That's the one I went for as well. Um, Forest it, Green Rovers, isn't it? So, Doncaster's 21. Colchester 24, Crawley 22, Forest Green 24, Crew 27, Stockport 28. Oh. Yes. It's got a K in it and a P and a Y. And a y. So, yeah, there we go. Look, I'm re enjoying recording at the moment because it's just happy all the time. Happy. Happy all the time. Uh, and there's a nice, lovely, positive mood at the games where we're going to. You still get the weirdos online who aren't happy, but, you the know. trolls. Yeah. Get back under your bridge. Yes. Um, well, I just wanted to say, um, on Tuesday, we're going to try out something new. Are we? Yes, we're going to do... Um, obviously, we do the previews of the games on the podcast, but we're going to do a live preview, I think. Okay. Before the game. Yeah. Um, this We're travelling up to Doncaster on Tuesday, so we may do this in the car. We may do this when we get to the hotel. We may do it. We're going to do a preview live. So yeah. I will give you more details when we know timings and such. Yeah. All um, right. Ryan doesn't know about this. No, I do now. So, uh, yeah. yeah, it's nice for him to be surprised now and again. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, and we'll see you again next week. Bye. Bye.